This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. It's time for Friday Follies, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. Sin was working super hard on a makeup tutorial show. She was teaching smoky eyes to folks out there who really wanted to know when some freaky deaky science stuff only understood by nerds. Zapped her into old radio shows that kind you might never have heard. Now she should probably be trying to get out. But Madison, she's having fun Living an old-time radio life Our explanation is done Madison is on the air When the spirit dies, but the dead live The dark god of the night is a beast Hey guys! So if you couldn't tell already, this is our Halloween episode! This is an adaptation from the radio show Stage 49's adaptation of Dracula by Bram Stoker, originally aired in 1949. Okay, gotta go. I'm playing the part of Jonathan Harker. Well, sorta. This is the blog of Madison Standish. Sorry, I don't do journals. I refuse to kill trees, and why would I write if I could type? Anyway, if you're reading this, I'm probably dead. When you're done crying over me, and I know it'll take some time, so don't rush, use this blog as a warning to others. Transylvania, May 5th, 1897. I have been traveling in this freaking smelly carriage so long, I could have watched the Snyder Cut like 20 times. And the area is so backwoods, I half expect to see a Waffle House. I could go for hash browns. More quickly, driver. More quickly, the sun sinks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bumpy. What year do they invent shock absorbers? Tradition would have it. These roads should never be repaired, lest the Turk consider it a warlike action. I think that's the same reason L.A. won't fix their potholes. This wild country, the ancient battleground of Bulgard and Turk, is not only a melting pot of races. Hey, America is a melting pot. Maybe we didn't melt evenly like Velveeta. More like when you melt cheddar cheese and the oil oozes out and there are big chunks that you have to break up with a fork. I mean to say, Transylvania is a melting pot of all the world's superstitions. Oh, I'm woke to all superstitions. I read my horoscope, I use crystals, I go to church, I do juice cleanses. What brings you to our far corner of the world? I'm on vacay. I'm heading up to a really cool Airbnb I found that was advertised mega cheap. May I ask, who is the proprietor? Count Chocula. Uh, Dracula. Oh, I must be hungry. Driver! More quickly! Am I to fly then? Dang it, woman! I'm getting motion sick here. You want to wear my lunch? Fraulein American. Uh, call me Madison. Fraulein Madison. Okay. Is it not the eve of St. George's Day? I know it's May 5th. Cinco de Mayo. Do you not know at midnight all evil in the world holds sway? Well, I do plan to get wasted on margaritas, if that's what you mean. Do you know where you go, Fraulein Madison? (gasps) Are you trying to tell me Transylvania doesn't have any Mexican restaurants? 
Perhaps our fellow passenger fears the dark. Or perhaps the devil is after us. Am I cray, or is she kind of scared of me? I had a co-worker who was scared of me. Well, she was scared I'd steal her boyfriend, which I did. So I guess her fear was warranted. There's your road, Borgo Pez. Fraulein Madison, if you do this, uh, take this crucifix. Oh, thank you. I used to have one just like this when I was in my Madonna like a prayer phase. Where had God go with you? Here, you can have my choker. We all thought the 90s were coming back, but I think once was enough. Well, the coach drove off, and I made my way up the long pass to Count Dracula's castle. Ugh, my kingdom for an Uber. It was dark by the time I finally got there, and Dracula was outside waiting for me. He looks shorter than you'd expect. Welcome to my house, Miss Standish. Enter freely, and of your own will. Cool, thanks. Quite a front door you got there. It once frustrated a Turkish army. I could have used a door like that for my last apartment. Jealous ex-boyfriend kicked it right off the hinges. Landlord was so pissed when it happened that he left and forgot his pants. Come. It is late and my servants are not available. Let me see to your comfort myself. So Drac and I ended up walking all over his castle. You think a place like that would have a secret passage or two? But nope. It was an endless maze. I felt like I was in line for the haunted mansion at Disney. Here. You may relax in my dining room and I shall retrieve for you a meal. You will, I trust, excuse me that I do not join you at supper, but I have already dined. You know, after that bumpy carriage ride, I don't think I can eat anything. Unless maybe you got some saltines? I would have to check. Eh, no biggie. Please, sit a while. I wish for you to tell me more about Los Angeles and the castle you have procured for me. Castle? In L.A.? When we last spoke, you had described a castle that was on a hillside overlooking the city. Do you mean Chateau Marmont? It's kind of like a castle. I think if Dracula needed a place to stay in L.A., that'd be it. Good. You shall make the arrangements. Yeah, but technically right now, isn't it 1897? Chateau Marmont won't be built until, like, the 20s. But, but, this show was performed in the late 1940s. I'll just take you with me to my past, but your future. Boom. I belong to the past. A past of brave races who fought as a lion fight for lordship. The Huns whose fury swept the earth till the dying peoples thought the werewolves themselves had come. That in their veins ran the blood of old witches who expelled from Scythia mated with the devils in the desert. What devil, what witch, was ever so great as Attila whose blood is in these veins? Jeez, just mention L.A. and everybody starts giving you their movie pitch. I myself am from an old family. You know what, Drac? Love to hear more about this, but I am zonked. How about we call it a night? Of course. I shall show you to your room. More walking? Let me pull up ways. I might be able to find a faster route. What's the address to my bedroom? Blog post, May 12th. Really digging Dracula's OG goth style. Bright red lips that emphasize his sharp pointy teeth, really pale skin, and these super long ass fingernails. Actually, those could use a little filing. I think coffin shape would totes perfect the look. For a count, he seems pretty chill. He's gone most of the day, but then we sit up all night and talk about him moving to LA. He seems really excited about all the nightclubs I recommend. But tonight was the first night he hasn't been around. Since I had the place to myself, I decided to throw in my earbuds and have a little solo dance party in my room. Now Madison was working super hard on a makeup tutorial (laughs) show. She was teaching smoky eyes to folks out there who really want to know. When some freaky dicky science stuff. Good evening. Oh. Sorry, didn't see you. Shall I come more closely? Now do you see me? Well, hello. I love what you're rocking here. A very steampunk meets Edward Scissorhands thing. I apologize if I frightened you. You didn't frighten me. 
But don't be offended. I go to a ton of haunted houses at Halloween. You really need to up your game to frighten me. Miss Standish, our most desirable guest. Oh, are you one of the servants Dracula keeps talking about? Great. I could majorly go for some fresh towels. It, it is very lonely here. Why? Are you the only servant? You are so young and beautiful. Campaigning for a big tip, I see. Can you not move? Are you immobile, trapped in a dream, perhaps? Okay, now you're just flattering yourself. One dreams of love and longs for love. Dude, are you coming on to me? Shall I come nearer? Eh, I've had worse pickups. The love of which you dream. Does he have hair like mine? Eyes as these? Such lips that you cannot resist? Sure. Would you like me to kiss you? Well, I have been stuck in this stupid castle with a guy older than my dead great-grandfather, so... Okay. Then I will kiss you. Let me show you love you have never dreamed. First, my lips to your throat. <laughs> Stop it! My neck is ticklish. How dare you touch her? How dare you when I had forbidden it? Please, be merciful. I shall remove myself at once. I apologize for the intrusion into your bedchambers. It's probably for the best. I promised myself I'd cut down on rando hookups. Hey, is it the torch lighting or do you look younger? What's that? None of your concern. <gasps> I know what it is. Uh, you used the anti-aging beauty regimen I suggested, didn't you? Yes, yes, your, your lavender night cream was exceptionally helpful. Right? Isn't that stuff like velvet magic? Um... Oh, you have something in the corner of your mouth. It's, um, dark red and ugh, dripping down your chin. Use the mirror in my compact. I got it here in my purse. Uh, I shall take care of this in my own chambers. Here you go. Wait, do you not have a reflection? This mirror is a wretched thing that does mischief. Foul vanity. Away with it! Dude, the hell? You threw my compact into the moat. My sister once threw my favorite pair of earrings into our pool, and I made her clean the filter with a flea comb until she found them. Um, my apologies. I, I shall replace it. Now, let me leave you to rest. Oh, man, that guy must have had some sharp teeth. Is my neck bleeding? Blood. I've had hickeys before, but they don't usually break skin. Blood uh, on your neck. Uh, I've got a Kleenex in my purse. Blood. He's got to be at the bottom. Uh, here, can you hold this? Ah! You okay there? What is that? Oh, that's the crucifix the crazy old lady in the carriage gave me. Hand it to me. I'll, I'll put it back in my purse. Uh, uh, your neck appears to still be bleeding. It is? Damn it. Where's that Kleenex? Is that a baby crying? Our business shall soon be completed, Miss Standish. Then we go to Los Angeles. For now, good night. Whoa. Well, I know how I'm gonna rate this Airbnb. Overall experience. Clean room. Easy check-in. Host is a bloodthirsty vampire. June 23rd. It's been a while. Let me fill you in. I managed to get Dracula to 1949 Los Angeles back on May 14th. Don't ask me how, I'll just refer you to our theme song. I checked us both into the Chateau Marmont, the legendary hotel of the Hollywood elite, filled with rising and falling stars, and eventually where John Belushi will OD on speedballs. Good times. I hadn't seen Dracula, or even thought about him really, since we first got here. He didn't come up again until I stopped in a hospital a few doors down from the hotel. Dr. Bruce, telephone, please. Dr. Bruce, telephone, please. This, then, is your little patient, Doctor. Yes, but asleep. Quite a simple case, truly. Hardly justifies a journey all the way from Amsterdam by such a noted philosopher and scientist. His color? It's good. I've read of this and of the other children in your papers. When found, he was so white, so bloodless. Quite so. Hey, uh, excuse me? I think I might be in the wrong place. I'm looking for the plastic surgery ward. Does this appear to be the plastic surgery ward to you? 
Not when I look at the size of your nose. We can't help you. Please leave. Dr. Vincent, please remove the bandage from the boy's throat. There, you see? The two tiny wounds, a simple case. Oh, hey, I've got two wounds just like that. Look. Indeed, she has. That's why I'm here. I can't get rid of these scars. I tried vitamin E, honey, olive oil, apple cider vinegar, coconut oil, lemon. I still have the scars, and now I smell like salad dressing. The wounds on the boy. Dr. Vincent, how do you account for them? Scratches, simple as that. And yours? I'm sorry we've not yet been introduced. Madison Standish. I'm Dr. Van Helsing. Miss Standish, how did you receive your scars? Hot vampire. Uh, What is this you say? Oh, tut, sir. Next you will be giving credence to all the newspaper stories touting the beautiful lady who lures away the little ones in the night. Journalistic Tommy Rot. Miss Standish, if I may impose upon a bit more of your time, would you accompany me to meet a friend of mine, another doctor? Are you single? Um, well, I I am, as it were, unmarried. Hot single doctor with a sexy accent. I'm all yours. Dr. J. Hamilton, Dr. J. Hamilton. There is so much for which we cannot account. In late May, I had to come to Los Angeles to fight such an illness as this boy presents. It afflicted the dearly beloved fiancé of a friend of mine. He is the doctor we venture to meet. A Dr. Seward. Ah, here we are. Dude, this is a mental ward. Precisely. Dr. Seward is a student of mental disorders. Okay, I'm not going in there. Being committed once was enough. I only mean for us to speak with him. I've heard of many children with a scar such as yours, but you are the first adult since Lucy. Abraham. Good to see you, John. Miss Standish, I would like you to meet Dr. John Seward. Miss Standish. Sup? Abraham, I was not aware you were in Los Angeles again, and so soon... You left shortly after, well, the funeral. That is the very reason I brought Miss Stanish to see you. Look at her neck. Oh, God, you're not going to bring in a bunch of med students now, are you? I swear, every time I get a pap smear, it's in front of the entire freshman class. Ah, I see what you mean. The scar is exactly the same as Lucy's. So what happened to Lucy? With our knowledge, our science, we were babies. She died. Her blood, it was as rich as her youth, yet... She died somehow of losing her blood. That almost happened to a friend of mine. We were at this frat party, and she'd been hitting the beer bong pretty hard. She had a pee, so she asked me to help her to the bathroom. I get her in there, shut the door, and suddenly I hear a crash. She'd passed out and hit her head on the sink and the toilet. I opened the door, and it looked like the elevator scene from The Shining. Well, that was the most bizarre symptom of Lucy's ailment. Night after night, a loss of blood. But where, then, was the blood? Nowhere. Do you remember the night it happened? It was the night old Renfield turned so violent. Oh, yes. How is Renfield? Uh, Still quiet, though his request for pets continues to escalate. No sooner did we give him sugar for flies that he told us they flew away, and next he requested spiders. When they ran off, it were sparrows. Lately the sparrows too flew away, and now he requests a kitten. But I am loath to grant it. Pets are very helpful for mental health. When my cat got depressed, we got him an emotional support dog. It cheered him up so much to scratch the hell out of that poor dog. (sighs) Miss you, Mr. Peanut. Why have you returned to Los Angeles, Van Helsing? Certainly you have read the reports about the boy under Dr. Vincent's care. The tiny wounds on his throat. Haven't we maddened ourselves enough trying to solve that fantastic riddle? And Madison here. Tell him how you came to have such scars. Hot vampire. They are unrelated. Lucy died of nervous prostration following great loss of blood. Indeed. That is what we believed at the time. But now? Well, now I intend to give you proof otherwise. Tonight, you must come with me to Lucy's tomb. Lucy's tomb? Are you mad? Are you allowed to say that in a mental ward? John, I throw my reputation, my reason, upon your mercy. Let me give to you proof. Dr. Seward, Mr. Renfield's turned violent again. Heavens! May I be of assistance? We may need all the manpower we can muster. Violent mental patient on the loose? Gotta go. Thieves! Rubbish! Swales, lock the door to the hall. Right away, sir. Wait! Let me out of here first! It's locked. Damn it! They shan't rob me! No one's gonna rob you. What manner of disorder is it, this this poor man? I call him a zoophagus, an eater of life. They shan't murder me! Many flies to a spider, many spiders to a sparrow. Is... They shan't murder me! He eats them. He eats them all. 
Ew. I think I'm gonna go back to vegan. Oh! He's coming at us. Help me oh! restrain him, Van Helsing. Yeah. I'm fight for my lord and master. Yeah. There's nothing to be done with him. Yeah. Swales, yeah. put the straitjacket on him. Oh, yeah. My lord, my master. He keeps pulling to the window. What is out there? What does he see? That's where I'm staying. The Chateau Marmont. I got the straitjacket on him. He can't oh, fight no more. My lord, will you desert me? No hope. No hope. <sighs> Why is Renfield suddenly so quiet? What's he staring at out that window? Nothing that I can see. Nothing but that bat flying away. Swales, get him into his cell. Yes, sir. And now the sun sets. You will come with me to the tomb, John? No. Can't we forget it? I'll go. Very well. Miss Standish will accompany me, and we shall provide you with proof. I love cemeteries. I always go to the summer movie nights at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Something about making out on top of a dead person's grave. So sexy. So Van Hansom and I headed over to the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. It was wild to see it in 1949 with so many fewer headstones than what I'm used to. I couldn't help thinking, wow, a ton more people are going to kick it before I'm here to watch Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Well, there's a tomb. I predict the door will open with ease. Does this make us grave robbers or something? I don't believe this grave can be robbed. I mean, I'm cool with that. Just wondering if it's something I could put on my resume under skills. Come inside. Dude, is that her coffin? It must be opened to get the proof I need. Ooh, I love the feeling of being excited scared. It's right up there with horny drunk. I just need to pry the lid. <sighs> Amazing. What's inside? Uncover your eyes and find out. It's empty. Where is she? Trust me, I'll show you. Okay, but right now your ratings are tanking, Geraldo. <sighs> it's near dawn. We cannot have much longer now to wait. Madison? Madison! Madison! So what if your girlfriend's home? Just tell her I'm your sister. Madison, will you please awaken? <sighs> huh? Huh? Oh, did I fall asleep again? Yes, and we need not worry of the undead rising as your snoring could strike fear into a banshee. Well, you didn't tell me our little outing to the cemetery was going to be an all-nighter. I would have brought my Adderall. Waiting here is the only way I may prove my suspicions about Lucy are correct. When science failed me, my last treatment was to fill her room with garlic flowers. When I was into Feng Shui, I got a money tree, but it didn't work. I think what I really needed was a get-out-of-credit-card-debt tree. Alas, her mother came and removed the flowers, found them distasteful. If I had health care, I'd be open to all kinds of medical treatments. But for now, I gotta settle for the home remedy section on WebMD. Look! A woman! In a really ugly nightgown! Come with me. We must go outside. There, walking through the graveyard. It is Lucy. You see? Ooh, I'm getting that excited, scared feeling again. With a little of that horny, drunk feeling, too. This might be the beginning of a fetish. Notice the blood-red lips, the teeth. Somehow they always protrude, the eye teeth. And her eyes, red. Now I know why I'm getting turned on. She reminds me of that hot vampire in Transylvania. Dracula was a major cockblock. Do you see? She's carrying with her a sleeping child. Why is she carrying a sleeping child? Carefully observe her lips to the child's neck. She drinks from his throat. This is the proof I need. Dr. Van Helsing. Aw, oh, man. I think she heard you. Lucy, you must return to your tomb. Come, and we can be. Release the child, Lucy. As you wish. Girl, don't just throw your uneaten food on the ground. My arms are hungry for you. And you shall have them. 
once you return to your tomb. Dude, isn't she like your best friend's fiancé? What about the bro code? I cannot bear the solitude. Slowly, Lucy. <laughs> what did you just do? Ah, this you do not like. The crucifix. You into Madonna too? She goes into her grave. There is much here that I, as a man of science, never before could have believed. Yet, here we see tonight that this, the crucifix, has been our salvation. This salvation has been brought to you by the letter T. Okay, so after my night with the Crypt Keeper, Dr. Van Hottie insisted we rush back to the hospital and bring John to the cemetery. But you know how you spent your whole childhood being told that dinosaurs look like giant lizards? And you watched all of the Jurassic Park movies, which made them seem so real, that when scientists were like, hey, we think they were actually brightly colored and with feathers, you're like, no, my entire childhood was a lie. That was kind of John's reaction. All right, Van Helsing, you've brought me here. Now what? To me, too, it is so difficult to believe what we have seen. But there are the living dead. Vampires. I know breakups are hard, but your ex is a child-eating vampire now, and you're just going to have to accept that. I do not believe in your superstition. You would if you'd been a depressed teenager obsessed with fringe culture who shopped at Hot Topic. You must listen to me, John. There is among us a vampire who works this evil. He does not sting and die, this vampire. He becomes more strong. He is of cunning more than mortal. For his cunning is the growth of ages through which he does not die. His love is the living, and his food is their blood. When his prey die, they too become the living dead, the vampire. You now speak of Lucy. We must save her soul. How? I'll show you. Ooh. Are you all right, Miss Standish? Excited, scared, horny. Don't mind me. Come, John, and face your Lucy. Must we disturb the others who sleep here in this tomb? We have to do that which must be done. Madison, set up the lantern there on that other coffin so we may see to work. Ooh. Now, John, open the coffin. Open the coffin? We must bring her peace. Oh, the strange, terrifying beauty. Is this really Lucy? Are those the lips I kissed? Ooh. Madison, try to control your urges. The horny wants what the horny wants. John, are you still willing? Yes. No one else has the right or the duty. I am ready. Madison, remove the tools from the bag. Okay, you got your standard crucifix, garlic flowers, and... Aha! Here we go. One mallet and pointed wooden stake. Yes. Right. The stake. Where? Right through the heart. The heart? Yep. Just pound that sucker right on in there. I loved her so very much. Remember those children. If she lives on undead, by her power over them, they come to her. They become as her. But if she die in truth, then all cease. The tiny wounds from the throat disappear. Is that how I get rid of these scars? Damn it. That means I have to go back to 1800s Transylvania and kill that hot vampire. <sighs> I feel like I'm burning through frequent flyer miles in these old-timey shows. It must be now. Let it be done. Oh, dear God, I cannot. All right, I got this. <laughs> Ugh, was not expecting her to wake up. My Lucy! Do it! Will you leave her in torment? <laughs> it's harder to get through the ribcage than it looks. <laughs> oh, I cannot bear it. Come on, baby, get in there. Eternal rest give to her, O oh Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Don't shut that down. I can't concentrate. Almost... I did not realize staking a vampire would be so bloody. TV and movies have totally misled me. Well, I could go for a shower. Anyone else? Shower? Blog entry. June the... Oh, I don't know. I haven't gone to sleep yet, so this is basically just one long date. I convinced Dr. Seward and Van Hunky to come with me back to my room at the Chateau Marmont so I could, you know, shower and change. John wasn't doing so good, but for someone who just saw his undead fiancé stake through the heart, he was hanging in there. John, possibly you should take another sedative. No. Please, continue what you were saying. 
There is so little we know. I have learnt the first time when he enters a house, he must receive an invitation. But he is cunning. We must trace each detail in the case of poor Lucy. We... What do you watch out the window so intently? Hmm? Nothing. Go on. Each moment of her life, from the moment of the first sign, the, the paleness, the dreams, the throat wounds. This you must trace and study for some... some clue. What do you do with that pistol? This! What the hell was that? John, have you taken leave of your senses? I saw in the window, with his black ugly wings spread out, there was a bat. Did you just freaking shoot out my window? Well, that's gonna rake up my hotel bill. I had to. I had to stop the bat. There is no bat here, shot at or otherwise. Now listen, Madison. You're going to tell me everything you know about this, this Count Dracula. We're going to war. War? Yes. War on Dracula. Mind if I get out of this towel first? Master! Master! I wait you, Lord and Master! I am here to serve you! Lord! Master! Remember me! What's this all about, Mr. Renfield? Why not play with your sparrows and give us a rest, huh? I've eaten them. Shame on you, Mr. Renfield. All those nice little sparrows? I must talk to Dr. Seward. I am in full possession of my faculties. I must beg of him to release me. Full possession, eh? You just ate your sparrows. I demand to speak to Dr. Seward immediately. Dr. Seward isn't coming in today. You'll just have to wait. No, sir. Now, this request is not the first consequence to myself, but of the health, the welfare, the very lives of others. Uh Uh-huh. Don't make me get the straitjacket again. I believe we are ready to act, but we are dealing with one who has survived many centuries and, we must assume, many attacks. We must not fail. We won't. Now, we know that in life he- I'm cold. Which one of you cranked up the AC? Such fragility, women. Cold at the most pleasant of indoor temperatures which men enjoy with idle comfort. Makes sense. Men are all muscle and no brains, so you're at home in a meat locker. Perhaps you're not well, Madison. This has been a strain for such a gentle one. Gentle one? I'm sorry, which one of us just staked a vampire? To continue, we know that in life Count Dracula was a brilliant man, a descendant of Attila the Hun. We know too from our studies he must be the Count Dracula who abandoned his army to the Turkish slaughter and did homeward flee to raise a new force and try again. And we know that he is right here in this very hotel. That is our next move. We shall surprise him as he sleeps. Which room does he occupy, Madison? Bungalow 3. You know, after helping Drac move out here, you'd think he'd maybe spring for me to have a bungalow too. But no, I gotta pay for my own room, and it doesn't even have a coffee maker. Hello. I gotta speak to Dr. Seward. It's for you, tough guy. Yes? Uh, Dr. Seward, it's Mr. Renfield. Someone tried to murder him. Someone tried to murder Renfield? We'll be right over. It is beyond belief. Who would want to murder such a harmless old man? Harmless? The guy bites the heads off birds. Wait, remember? Last we saw him. Lord and Master was his cry. At the bat. The bat outside the hospital window! We must go to the hospital at once. Renfield must know something about all of this. Oh, uh, pardon me. I appear to have caught you on your way out. Move aside. We have urgent business. I am the hotel manager, and I cannot permit you to remain in this room with a shattered window. Thanks a lot, guys. John, we must stay and assist Madison in relocating to another room. Oh, I'm afraid we have no other vacancies. The hotel is at full capacity. We cannot let this waylay us any longer. Look, you two go. I'll figure something out. Once we settle this with Renfield, we will return. I'm really sorry about the mess. You should have seen the plays when Jimmy Stewart stayed here. Let's just say, when I watched It's a Wonderful Life, I cheered for Potter. This is how I found him, Doctor. Just a few minutes ago when I was coming around to turn out the lights. The window bars were torn open, the door flung into the corridor, the poor old loony... Jacket! Take off the straight jacket! Uh, there is no straight jacket, Mr. Renfield. Uh, uh, Poor devil. Smashed about like that. We must arouse him. He must talk. 
My lord. But before all this happened, he kept going on about needing to be released. Lives depend on it, he said. Mr. Renfield, tell us. Oh, the bat came. He stood at my window. He laughed with his red mouth. The white teeth glinted in the moonlight. I was angry. Before he'd made promises. All these lives and more will I give you through countless ages if you fall down and worship me. I invite him in. Come in, Lord and Master. Enter. He is in my room. Then I know I am nothing to him. My loyalty of no value. He comes to finish me. It is next to be the young lady of charm, he tells me. She has been of more service, and she will be his servant, not I. Lord and Master, I gave you everything. Renfield. He is dead. Poor old Looney. What did he say? It is next to be the young lady of charm. She has been of more service and will be his servant. Been of more service? Madison! Madison? Young lady of charm? Perhaps to someone who has been undead for centuries. I really appreciate you letting me crash in your bungalow. The whole place is full up. Your skin is the snow. Your throat as soft as the quivering rabbit. It's like ice in here. What's with you guys and the cold? Shall we warm your dreams, beautiful one? I will kiss your neck and then you will kiss mine. Your blood will be my blood. My blood will be your blood. You will know in your blood that I will come again. And you will seek me forever. Hey, don't read into this, dude. I just need a place to stay for the night. Dracula! Holy crap, you freaking gun nut! You are not a good guy with a gun. You are a douche nozzle with a gun. Van Helsing, I shoot him, but he doesn't die. Maybe you're not a good shot, idiot. I have the weapon he fears, the crucifix. He's afraid of Madonna? You, who live in eternal death, you fear this cross, the sign of eternal life. You think to baffle me? My revenge has just begun. I spread it over centuries. End him, Van Helsing! End him! Do it for the memory of my Lucy! I must remind you that this is not vengeance. Our actions are to rest a human soul. Oh, God, here comes the self-righteous crap. Just kill him! How his eyes burn with such ferocious rage. Don't look at him! Just do it! Your fear overwhelms you. You cannot move. You shall be my creatures to do my bidding. My jackals when I want to feed. Fools! Better men than you have tried to stop me. But no man alive will ever... No man, maybe, but I'm a woman. Madison, you did it. You ended the reign of terror from this vicious beast. This is actually getting kind of easy for me. Watch out, Buffy. (laughs) My bungalow! Oh, crap. Look at all this blood. Damn it, do you have Jimmy Stewart in there? I'm gonna go, and, um, you two are gonna take care of everything with the hotel manager. Bye! I cannot believe this. Two rooms in one day? Someone is going to pay for this, or I will see you behind bars. What just no happened here? with destroying my hotel. I do not know. One moment we're chasing the most evil creature to ever walk the earth, and now we have... This little man yelling at us. Immediately, it feels to me that Madison is to blame. Indeed, John. Evil comes in many forms. Stage 49 was part of the Trans Canada Network of the Canadian Broadcast Corporation in Toronto. Their adaptation of Dracula by Bram Stoker aired in 1949 with Lauren Green in the title role. With a script of Stage 49's adaptation readily available today online, where we got it too, by the way, theater groups all over enjoy bringing the script to life live on stage as a Halloween treat. We hope you've enjoyed our take on the Dracula legend, and happy Halloween from everyone here at Madison on the Air. Bye! Hey, it's 
Madison. I wanted to thank you guys so much for listening. Before the announcer dude reads the credits, which you should totes listen to because this cast was amazing. Did you know we have an email newsletter? You'll get the first look at upcoming episodes and a bunch of not found anywhere else Madison stuff. To sign up, go to our website, madisonontheair.com. I promise I won't spam you. Much. Bye! Madison on the Air was written and produced by Chrissy Talon Sage with music composition and audio engineering by Jeremy Sage. The role of Madison Standish was played by Chrissy Talon Sage. Jeremy Sage appeared as Dracula with Kareem Cronfley in the role of Van Helsing. Other actors in the cast were David Pinion as Dr. John Seward, Henry Graham Murray as Renfield, Steve Jun as the orderly Swales, Albert Garnica as the hotel manager, Laura Christine Elliott as Lucy, Jackie Waldman as the old Robani woman, and Aaron Stahl as the carriage passenger. If you produce audio dramas, it obviously isn't to become rich and famous. You love the medium, and you want to share your passion for theater of the mind. The Mutual Audio Drama Network is looking for you. Mutual presents audio dramas every day of the week, each with its own genre. Mystery, sci-fi, comedy, horror, all reaches of the imagination. It doesn't matter if you produced your shows years ago or are still cranking them out. Share them on the world's largest collection of modern audio drama and audio fiction. Give a listen at MutualAudioNetwork.com. And if you'd like to be a part of the excitement, with free access to all sorts of voices, sound effects, music, and more, just drop a line to mutualaudio at gmail.com. The Mutual Audio Drama Network. Why not join us today?